So talk about this process. What's going on right now? Uh, Leslie set it up for us nicely. So these companies have not raised fresh capital. There are buyers and sellers, presumably the sellers, the early investors, insiders. What are the market makers doing right now? How does it differ at this stage from what an opening of an IPO would be? Actually, what's interesting about that, Mike, is what the market makers are doing right now is the same thing we do every day when we open stocks here at the New York Stock Exchange. We look at the buyers, we look at the sellers, and we find a market price to open where supply meets demand. They're beginning that process, and, and that's how it'll unfold over the next couple of hours. That's not different from how we open stocks, and it's not different from how we open IPOs when, when they've had an offering the night before. It's still driven by market forces, so it's really the same process for at this point in stage. The, the major difference is there wasn't an allocation like occurs in an IPO the night before where, where some shares are sold, some new shares are sold. Palantir and also Asana is doing a direct listing this morning. They're not selling new shares to the market. And I think what's interesting, Mike, too, is this morning we have two IPOs, two direct listings, and two SPACs, and I think that's yeah. going to be reflective of the future. I was actually going to say, so now you essentially have a menu of vehicles that companies can consider if they want to become publicly traded. Uh, what are the considerations? Because at this point, I, just mechanically speaking, uh, it seems like if you're a candidate for a direct listing, obviously you don't need new capital at the moment. Uh, you probably have to have, be of a certain size and with a decent recognizable brand name or at least established uh, business out there. Uh, but also it would seem to me that if you're a potential buyer in this company, unlike an IPO where there's urgency to put more orders in because you might not get an allocation, it seems to reward patience. You want to see exactly how much you know, supply gets drawn out and how it trades. What have we learned from Slack and Spotify on that front? Yeah, you're exactly right, Mike. There are, there are new paths to public now, and a company can choose what's right for them based on their own goals. And each one of these paths has, has their own set of benefits that, that come with them. So with a SPAC, for example, it's all about control. A company negotiates with one counterparty. They have visibility and control over the terms of the agreement that they're, that they're uh, setting when they, when they do their business combination. With an IPO, they have the support of the traditional infrastructure, and they have a little bit more control over their shareholders and who's getting an allocation at their first, at, as their first entrance to the public markets. With a direct listing, it's more about reducing the cost of capital and having the market set their terms and, and not seeing a, a, a quick pop the next day. So companies are looking at each of those things. In these examples, there is no capital raise. We are working on introducing that as well so that you can raise capital on direct listing. And that's where I think you're going to see the market start to go is that each one of these paths to public will evolve a little bit. We're already seeing Palantir introduce lockups on top of a direct listing, which traditionally in the first two didn't exist. And I think you'll see the IPO lockup uh, scenarios change as well and start to evolve. So it won't be exactly each one of these three paths to public won't be exactly the same. We're starting to see evolution in all three of them. What steps, Stacey, are you taking to get more companies to list at the New York Stock Exchange? If you look at traditional IPOs and NASDAQ, uh, really beating the New York Stock Exchange with 112 listings versus an IC, which has had 27. But when it comes to SPACs, uh, the exchange really leading with 61 versus 54 for the NASDAQ. So what steps are you taking to maintain uh, your lead in SPACs and also gain more traction with IPOs? Yeah, the New York Stock Exchange is the number one exchange for global IPO proceeds raised. And, and that's, that's certainly just to make that clear. We innovate with companies on, on their new paths to public. So we're focused not just on IPOs, but also SPACs and also direct listings. Our companies have come to us and said, hey, this is, this is how I'd like to tweak the status quo. And we've been working with them on new paths to public. So that's why we continue to be the global leader in IPO raising. And SPACs is just one avenue of that. The more complex a transaction, our market model with people involved that allows for oversight and control of that entrance to the public markets, which is such a critical time for a company, is really what differentiates us for these more complex situations. And that's why companies continue to choose the NYC and the larger companies uh, choose the NYC because of the complexity of those transactions. And whether it's lower rates or, you know, pending liquidity from the Federal Reserve, how has the economic backdrop catered to more companies trying to find uh, efficient ways to raise more capital? I think there are a few different contributing factors to why we've seen this year be such a strong year for companies going public. September is the strongest uh, year on record for the New York Stock Exchange in raising IPOs. We've, we've, we've welcomed more companies, uh, more proceeds to the NYC this month than we have on re in any month prior. And a lot of that is, you know, the trend has been for companies to stay private longer. 
And when they stay private, there was access to capital in the private market. So public capital wasn't the main driver for their going public. What we saw in 2020 was the pandemic really was a, 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 the public markets was there during the pandemic for companies that needed to raise money very quickly in the spring. And we saw many industries take advantage of that airlines, hospitality, retail. Uh, we've raised almost $130 billion, over $130 billion now on the NYSC in both IPOs and follow ons. So many of the companies that were in the private markets are now saying, I want access to the public markets because that is that the, they've seen that value of access to capital when you need it most has certainly been on display in this challenging year. So companies are, are, are moving and the pendulum is swinging from staying private to going public. And certainly that's, that's the trend that's been defining 2020 for, for capital markets. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.